Welcome back on NLTV. Today the focus, the topic is the demand response, the key opener to uh, the energy transition in a world that uh, uh, will see more and more renewables uh, in the grid and uh, to make this happen. Well, the main need is flexibility. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce Mike Storch to this talk. Welcome. Thank and you. Eliano Russo. Thank Welcome, you. Welcome, Eliano. Is demand response uh, a growth stage technology system or uh, there is more? Tell us about I mean, the demand response, first of all, is an incredible uh, opportunity. Uh, allows us uh, to basically uh, aggregate and manage flexible loads uh, on behalf of our customers and create value not only for the customers but also for the grid. I think uh, demand response uh, is not a commodity. Uh, there are multiple ways to provide demand response, multiple markets where you can monetize demand response. We started by offering capacity services. We are now moving into ancillary services. So it's really a very exciting uh, uh, development and uh, being already today global leaders in demand response, managing more than six gigawatt of capacity globally, I think we are very, very well positioned to uh, confirm and strengthen our leadership in the globe. Mike, you are in the US energy sector since a long time. Um, could you explain us uh, which is the role of demand response in the US uh, energy market uh, and also if you can tell us more about this deal with Amaren in Missouri. Well, as you pointed out, uh, thank you very much that I've been in this business a long time. I started in just renewables. And uh, as the renewables, really, I've been doing renewables now for over 30 years. And as renewables have grown, literally in the U.S., they've pretty much tripled from where they were back in the mid-80s. And demand response has been one of the critical tools in order to have better control over the grid. Well, the Ameren deal, just quickly, is uh, Ameren is the 12th largest utility in the United States. And uh, what we have, and it took us about a year and a half to get this finally approved through all the processes involved. But we're now the exclusive uh, party putting together a demand response program for uh, about 100 megawatts. This is roughly a $10 million contract. And as the exclusive provider, it means that customers that want to participate in demand response yeah. have to deal with us. Uh, in the United States, we have a virtual identical opportunity in the state of Arizona. And uh, I won't mention the name of the entity because it's still not finalized, but we have been told verbally that it's our award and that program will be finalized uh, in the next several months. And we're working on a number of others, including establishing demand response programs in states that don't yet do it. The, uh, the central part of the United States and the Deep South doesn't have as much demand response, but as renewables have grown in those regions, it's, a, again, a tool that they've identified that they need. Eliano, what about new geographies? What about new uh, way to get the flexibility solutions uh, in another way, maybe, beyond um, demand response? Yeah, I think uh, also in this case we have multiple opportunities. Uh, in terms of geographies, uh, we are present not only in North America, we are already leaders in Korea, in Japan, in Australia, in New Zealand and we are planning to enter new markets starting with uh, Singapore already this year. Um, but the growth is not just about geographies, the growth is also about uh, new applications like FastDR, so being able to provide the service to our customer with the shorter activation time. Yeah. And it's about new tool. Uh, let's think about storage. Uh, we are making a, a huge investment in terms of time and resources to really develop uh, our optimization software because in the end the storage business is going to be a software business. It's just uh, up to us to make it happen and we are very well positioned, as I said, to, to succeed. And on the other hand, we have the um, electric vehicles potential markets. Uh, we uh, already said many times that an electric vehicle is basically like batteries with four wheels. Absolutely, and I think this is our strength. We are investing on multiple sources of flexibility. The system, the power system, will need all the different sources because those sources have different uh, 
duration, different activation time, and the fact that we are building also an architecture in terms of uh, platform and verticals and functionalities will allow us to always leverage the right source of flexibility at the right time. We are getting digital more and more. Well, in the United States, for example, the key with the automobiles and electric vehicles is ultimately aggregation. As you say, they're batteries on wheels. Yeah. We have a pilot program underway in California where a few thousand vehicles are aggregated for a 30 megawatt program and the source of, uh, of that program, the, the customer, if you will, uh, supplier, are uh, electric vehicle owners. So it's not just Denmark, but also US. Thank you, Eliano, and thank you, Micah, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, it was a pleasure.